Okay, I've got the inverter here and the ball door inverter motor. And I want to show what the output voltage is versus the frequency on this. I went through and measured, varied the hertz on the inverter and measured the RMS uh, voltage line to line here. Went from T1 to T2 and measured over here uh, with the true RMS meter, the 8060A. Went through and measured uh, the voltage here. So it looks like once it gets up to 60 hertz, the voltage, that's it. And so the voltage over here goes from at 2 hertz, it's 84 volts, 5 hertz is 96, 20 hertz is 164, 30 hertz, 196, 60 hertz, about 270 volts, and that's roughly about 1800 RPM. And if I keep on increasing the frequency, it just drops just a hair, probably because, uh, probably because you got a little bit more load, just drops a volt or two. But basically, it's constant 270 to 264 here. So plotting this on here, it looks like this. Here it is at 5 hertz, 10. Kind of goes up like this, and then it peaks out at 270. And it goes horizontal. So I'm going to go ahead and run this thing up here. Here's the model numbers here. This is a motor is an IDN M3534. It's a third horsepower. The inverter is 110 volt input. It's a 510101H1J Westinghouse uh, Tico over here. So we're going to go ahead and start this up. And I've got this now using the uh, keypad here instead of the knob. I'll get that so you see a little bit of the shaft in the background there. If I want to change the speed, I'll hit this and go click over here. Let's go to uh, 75 hertz. Let's say I wanted to go to this changes the digit. 175 hertz. It's going to scream now. This is the frequency. It's ramping it up. Now let's go ahead and go to making it 180. Oh, it actually did a jump there. So 180 hertz is 5400 RPM. This motor over here has got a max. This is specs on the motor. Spec, max spec is uh, 6,000, so 6,000 would be uh, 200 hertz. This is a 6,000, and it's 1,725 under load at 60 hertz. So it would, there was no load to be 1,800 if it was a synchronous motor. So I'm going to go back here like this. got that thing running at 6,000 RPM, and that's a surplus motor, so I don't know if the wine is from the bearing on there or that's just normal through the inverter. I don't have a control, so that's going 6,000 RPM. And if I want to go back here and just do a check here. Let's 
voltmeter here. Make sure I don't do something stupid. There's 266 volts. If I try to measure the frequency, it's going to measure the hash on the top. So there it is, 4.8 kilohertz. But it's not actually measuring the hertz like this. So if I want to go through and drop this down, hit this button like this, and that digit's flashing. So I can go back and let's just get it to here. Let's hit it 100. You hit this button one more time. Here it's slewing down. Now let's say you want to run this at 3600 RPM. So hit this. I get to the that digit's blinking right there. Is that in here? So I'm gonna hit this. And then I'm gonna go up. And you hit this button. And I'm using the keypad instead of the pot. So that is 120 hertz, which is down here is 3600 RPM. And the nameplate on this over here is eight seventeen twenty-five. But the max RPM is six thousand. So if I want to go down here to the nameplate, we'll go back to sixty hertz like it's not used to an inverter, just line frequency. We go back here. Sound like a siren. And this is wired. For low voltage. Low meaning this is 230 volts. This is for 460. And this is how the wires are wired up. See on here it says 230 volts or 460. And then go down over here. There's a set of inner windings for the star, and then there's another one. And so the connections are such that there's a con wire connected from these two dots, these two dots, these two dots, pulled out. So just for testing this motor here, I've just got the ones that are powered up right into here. I don't even have separate legs. And something might... On this thing here, I just noticed this This is the data connector here. There's the RJ45. Of course, this is the data in. Or you can have this for a pot, the ground, and the 10 volts, and the wiper. Of course, this is a 56C motor. C means that the face over here is machined. So this particular motor's got a foot on the bottom, plus it has a machined face. I wanted a what they call a 56C, because uh, what I'm going to mount this in. And then this is a removable bonnet back here. You can take this off. And again, I don't know if this is actually bearing noise on here, because i got a bad bearing, or is that just the typical inverter hash. An inverter rated motor here generally has windings such the wire is uh, more robust for running on an inverter. If you use a motor that's non-inverted 
it'll run, but it may fail a little bit earlier because you've got a, a lot of uh, raspy output on an inverter, and it tends to be a little bit harsh on the uh, windings. So, inverter motors generally has more robust uh, magnetic wire on there. And then some of these are called vector duty to where I believe you can get more torque out at a low RPM. I'm not really sure on that. But again, to change this to the knob, I got a little bit more light than yesterday's video. Let's just go through and try this. A little bit easier. Let me see if I can get a little bit around here. It may be better like this. I turn this off. I'm gonna hit mode. And in the manual, it tells you the different settings, and the one that's mode 5 is the input source. And you hit enter. Zero, I'm going to change it to 1, which I believe is the pot. And it says end. That means it, it took the program. If you do it when it's running, I know on the speed it won't take it. So, you can go ahead and... So now it's controlled by the pot. And also in that mode it has settings you can use it back here through the, I believe this pot, external pot, or programmed or whatever. There's a whole bunch of, this thing is just crazy how much you can program it. So there's the shaft. And the, again, the max speed this is going to go at is what I've programmed like on here. So if I do it Turn this all the way over, it's going to go up to the 200, 200 hertz. When you first buy the inverter, the default is, is a max of 60 hertz. And since this motor is rated max at 6,000, I'm at the max there. I wouldn't try that on a motor, it's not, I would, don't go above the max RPM on a motor because you could have a mechanical uh, shatter, something could break in there real bad, not good. I want to try to set this to say 120, that's how easy this is to do. If you're doing machine shop work, it's probably good enough. So the 120 on this times 30 is 3600. So it's going 3600 RPM. But I want to go to 3000, I'm going to change this to 100 hertz. If you're a musician, you could probably tell by the tone. We go to 90 hertz, would be 270. To 2700. And then 1800 would be 60 hertz. close enough. Thirty hertz would be nine hundred RPM.
So you turn it like that, it's slowing down. You'd, it's hard to figure out where you are on the clock position until it actually gets there because it's slowing down. There's 30 hertz. Here's the motor I'm using. Let's see how hot heat sink is. This is a heat sink you can mount and it's cool as can be. So if you're going to really press this, normally this is mounted vertical and then the sink down on here has got a plate. I think it's four millimeter screws. That's the unit there. And it's upside down, but it says one phase, 100 to 120 volts, plus 10% minus 15, 50 to 60 hertz, 19 amps. Output three phase, 0 to 240 volts, up to five, 599 hertz. It's a little bit under 600 hertz. So I was using this at a third of the speed. I was using the unit at a third of the rating going to 200 hertz. As far as the noise on this, a lot of motors and inverters kind of make funky noises. So if I ran this on straight three phase without an inverter, I could detect whether how much is just the noise from the inverter or whatever. So for machining or something, you can hook a remote onto this and just use a separate dial. And this unit here is for one horsepower, three-fourths of one horsepower. This is a third of a horsepower motor. When you turn one of these off, you need to wait to all the voltages are dropped so you don't get knocked on your butt because this has got a DC, all these inverters have a DC uh, bus on them that they're pulling the legs back and forth. And so you probably got a bus in there of three or four hundred volts or something like that. Same thing goes with the uh, inverter wind mini split or something. You need to turn it off and let everything discharge before you go through and uh, play around with it. So that's the new toy there, the ball door motor and then the inverter. And I've just barely scratched the surface on the on the features of this thing. But it's kind of a neat cool device.